yesterday, we started talking about imaginary numbers. Uh, where did they come from? You made them up. Weird. I, didn't, I didn't just make them up. <laughs> like, square root. Weird, weird square root. Or what, what specifically under square root made negative. it? Negative. Yeah, negative. Negative. You can't have negatives under roots. It, the calculator won't even accept it. So that's where we started getting imaginary numbers. Now there's a slight difference when you say imaginary number and complex number. It's related, but you should know the difference between the two. What a complex number is, is it's a two-part expression. So it's two parts, not seven parts, not one part. Two-part expression where the first part is some sort of real number and the second part is some sort of imaginary number and an imaginary number will have an I next to it. Now what is a real number? Well you know real numbers. Every number that you've been taught since you were four years old is a real number. Five or seventeen, even negative two. Fractions, one-fifth. Uh, decimals, negative six point seven. Those are all real. So when we do a complex number, what, what did it look like? It will be some real thing and then a plus or minus sign and some imaginary thing. So a real number and then an imaginary number. The two things together, like I circled, make up what we call a complex number. It's a two-part thing. And you can't put real things and imaginary things together. Uh, so then we just set them next to each other. 6 plus 8i together, circled, is a complex number. It's got the two parts needed, the real part the imaginary part. Can't you just stick it in the calculator and figure it out? Well, I'm not. There's nothing to figure out here other than what you're looking You just need to I mean, know. I mean, if you had to. Well, there's nothing to, there's nothing to figure out here. What I, just need, I just need you to know what you're looking at is an imaginary number. I'm not asking you to do anything. You can't add 6 and 8i because they're not like terms. Like, you can't add 6 and 8x. So it's, that's it. Those two pieces together make up what is a complex number. Now, one of the first things you're going to do with complex numbers is add them. So we're going to have one complex number, which is two pieces, and another complex number. So when we look on the back side here, it says adding complex numbers. Well, this parenthesis is a complex number, and that parenthesis is a complex number. And if you add them, well, really, it's just like adding like terms, like what we did back in Algebra 1. Add the real parts. Add the 8 and the 3, and you get 11. Then add the imaginary parts. Add the 6i plus negative 2i, or 6i minus 2i. And that's where you get 4i. And it's not that hard. Now, what you're going to see later down the road, though, it will get more difficult. This is just adding. You could subtract them. You could multiply them, or you could divide them. And as it gets more complicated, one thing that's going to make life actually a lot easier is this tool, which is your graphing calculator. Now the reason why this might help, there's nothing we're going to graph here, but that letter I, that means imaginary, is located at the bottom of your calculator. Right here, above the decimal point. You'll have to hit second to use it, but that I is the same as our imaginary I. So what we can do is when you're asked to add two complex numbers, I can put this in, i's and all, into my graphing calculator. So if I go 8 plus 6i plus 3 subtract 2i, make sure you say subtract, do not put 3 negative 2i, that's not it. If I put it in just like that, I know the, the answer is 11 plus 4i, and the calculator is going to tell me it, just like that. It's a complex answer. It's two parts, 11 plus 4i. Uh, so that's going to make it easier for you to add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them. Now, honestly, you probably didn't need the calculator for this. Just add 8 and 3 and add 6 and negative 2. But as things get more complicated, or if you want to check to make sure you did it right, you know where to go for the i. And to give credit where credit is due, uh, the person who found this I and brought it to my attention a few years ago was Grant Moore, who I think just one day when we were doing the notes and we were learning how to add the I's and subtract the I's, I think he was half asleep and he woke up and looked at his calculator and goes, he said, hey, is that I on my calculator the same as the one you're doing? And I was like, I don't, I don't think so. But then we tried it out and it was. So 
Thanks to Grant Moore, your life is much easier. I really could see Grant doing that. Yes. He had a moment of, uh, brilliance. of brilliance right then. And so thank you, Grant Moore, for making your life easier. Right. So if you ever see him, you'll be like, hey, Mr. Jones still gives you credit for your discovery of the letter I on his calculators. Okay, a complex number now. You know what complex numbers are. They are a real thing and an imaginary thing. Uh, this right here is a complex number, but you don't see I because it's not there yet. But here's 8 plus the square root of negative 6. What, is, what do you know about the square root of negative 6? It's not possible. So what do you do with that not possible negative 6? I put an I and then I remove the negative. So square root of negative 6 is actually I, I square root of positive 6. I square root of 6. And I put it both ways. Circle this one. This is probably how you'll see it. I would think the best way is to put that I in front of a root. But if they didn't, if they put it out to the right, that's not wrong. I mean, they could put it out here. I don't, I don't know why they would, unless they're just in a funky mood. They're going to put it out to the right. But I put it to the left of the root, like nine times out of ten. Okay, let's look at this next example. Now, one thing I can promise about this next example is that you absolutely cannot put this top line into your calculator, any calculator, unless there's some sort of super magic calculator I don't know about. You cannot put the square root of negative 64 in a calculator without getting an error. So you do need to use a little brain power. The square root of negative 64 is a i because it becomes, and I'm just going to put this here, and since this is your notes, you should put this here too. The square root of negative 64 is i square root of 64. And then the square root of 64 is 8. That's where 8i comes from. And on this other one, I'm going to turn this into i square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of negative 16 turns into 4i. So yeah, you can't put this in your calculator, but a little brain power, make this 8i, make this 4i, and then you could. Not that you need to. You could just go, okay, look, 6 minus 4 is 2. 8i minus 4i is 4. The one mistake you might make is if you said 8i plus 4i is 12i. You have to go 8i minus 4i. Uh, remember, when you're subtracting, you have to subtract this and this. But you can always, if you're not confident, use your tool. And the good thing about that is your calculator will not forget to distribute the minus for you. The calculator, if put it in right, is going to get it right. Oh my gosh. So you got 2, two plus 4i. Okay, what I have really quick is I want you to try these three. I will put the answers up here uh, in just a second. But try these three. Understand you're adding on the first one, subtracting on the second one, and adding on the third one. Take a minute. If you want, use the calculator. If you can do it without, do it without. It might be quicker to do it without. So see what you come up with. And then I'll go ahead and I will uh, I'll post the answers up there just to check. Make sure that you get it right. I was solving it, and I got the answer, and then I tried clicking it on my page. On the paper? Like, I want, hey, it's not highlighting. It's not. Yeah. That's how our brains are programmed, Diane. I was like, why isn't this working? <laughs> already got them. You look up there and check. I wrote underneath them what they're all supposed to be. Okay, so uh, these are the three you should have gotten right here. 1 plus 2i, negative 4 minus 10i, 4 minus 13i. Anybody disputing those answers? Yes. 
Oh, do you share? You feel really good about disputing? <laughs> I feel really good about my answers. Actually, I messed this up last hour or so, but I, so I feel even better because I know <laughs> what they are. Uh, just to sum this up really quick, yesterday, imaginary. You learned imaginary. Where do they come from? Negative square root. Yeah, square root with a negative under it. Today, the difference. Today, what is a complex number? A number of a number. adding or subtracting a imaginary. Yeah. A number, a real number, wow. plus wow. an imaginary. That's it. It's, it's two parts. A real number. Yeah. <laughs> Plus or minus an imaginary number. So that's what a complex number looks like. Two parts. A lot of times they will be in parentheses and it goes together. So that's it for complex numbers, imaginary numbers. Let's go ahead and get started.